Hello, good evening all. Uh, I'm Lalit here. Uh, I'm working in an IT company called uh, Renosys Technologies. Uh, I have experience in, I work in PHP and open source technologies including WordPress, Magento, YI and uh, Coordinator and also have some exposure past in Python and Java. Today uh, I am here to talk about WordPress security. So uh, basically I will cover three things. Firstly why we are talking about security, some statistics that will help why security is important, uh, why you need to secure your WordPress system. Second is some security tips how you can uh, include, uh, how you can improve the security of your WordPress and uh, uh, next some recommended plugins uh, that can help you in that process. Uh, before we talk about that, how uh, many of you have experience in WordPress? Nice. <laughs> I think everybody knows about this. So millions of websites are running on WordPress and uh, many of we think that WordPress is not secure and uh, sometimes when we start a new project we try to avoid WordPress. but actually it provides so flexibility and fast development so we could not. So WordPress is not, uh, we cannot say WordPress is not secure, it is a way how we are using it, how we are uh, developing our code that is also important. Here are some statistics, let us see that firstly uh, that is uh, from wpscan.org that uh, does it and also they have providing a database, open source database. So they listed that more than 4000 vulnerabilities are uh, recognized, more than 54 percent are from WordPress plugins that are being mostly used, 31 percent are from WordPress core itself and uh, 14 percent are from WordPress themes, some popular themes word is using, many websites are using and uh, most of these, uh, these are total uh, till recognized but most of those are resolved in the new versions or the update. If we talk the types of uh, vulnerability, so the most, you can see the most is XSS cross site scripting and the SQL injection that is uh, 39 percent vulnerabilities are cross site scripting and uh, you know about cross site scripting, it enables hackers to uh, reveal the information of another user by executing yeah, like means some form is submitting, they submit the malicious code and that if you are not validating the input and directly showing on browsers, so at some user if that code executes that can steal cookies, can send that to another server. So that is the most common uh, vulnerability and you can see 84 percent of all over the internet the main vulnerability cause is this, the type of this. Here you can see the top 10 uh, uh, plugins that is uh, most vulnerable. You can see some common names like next gen gallery you mostly use and uh, some are uh, commercial in this and one is word fence you know about it maybe, it is a security plugin itself and it is also uh, vulnerable. So that is uh, the thing we need to see. Uh, here are some top 10 uh, most uh, popular WordPress themes, many are hosted in, uh, you can buy from theme forest and they are having number of vulnerabilities but uh, I think only three vulnerabilities are most in those all uh, themes, some famous are in focus, you can see. Uh, I picked this data from wpscan uh, org. So, in summary, uh, there are threads you need to uh, see and you have to resolve that. So how we can do that? So here are some tips uh, that can help you, how you can secure your WordPress setup and how you can save your customers important data. The main concept, the first thing is update, update, update. You have to update if you are updating your WordPress, if you are updating your plugins which you are using, you are updating your themes if there is new version available, it is best because as soon new vulnerability recognized, the community behind the WordPress release the new versions with the fixes, the plugins uh, makers uh, release a new update with those fixes. So as much possible update, that is the best thing. Second, uh, if you are starting a new project and starting uh, 
to create a new theme always create the child theme of the latest theme i think two three themes available when you uh, set up a new wordpress so i generally use 2011 i think uh, to copy uh, to make a child theme and then start our uh, theme implementation second uh, if you are doing some customization in installed plugins if you install some plugin always use hooks do not directly write the code uh, that makes it hard to update so in update you have to take care of those so always use uh, hooks when doing some customization in your plugins and no excuse we have to update next is uh, secret keys uh, secret keys in wp config uh, you can write uh, these uh, different kind of keys and uh, these keys actually make uh, do some encryption on the data saving on the client browser including cookies so it makes hard to steal those cookies and decrypt those because only these keys can uh, encrypt or decrypt decrypt the cookies saved on the browser side so if you are changing these keys browser uh, user automatically log out and uh, wordpress itself provide a generator for these cook, uh, these keys uh, you can uh, just open this url api.wordpress.org secret key 1.1 and you can see directly the same code uh, like this after code uh, so the, these constant are defined there you just copy paste those and replace in your wp config that's it and you must need to do that and i think wordpress uh, wordpress 3.0 later on they are actually doing this for you before wordpress 3.0 in 2.0 we have to do that manually uh, next uh, we should not use admin as a username because millions of installation is there everybody using admin so if your site is malicious <coughs> uh, you if your site can uh, be threatened by SQL injection, anybody knows admin. So we can write where username uh, is admin. So that can uh, break your security. So change the name admin. You can change directly in the database or you can create another user uh, with a different name, give the admin credential to that user and delete this admin account that by default comes. You can do that also, but never use admin. Second, change the admin path. So, uh, because admin is for you, site owner, not for public. So, you should change the path of admin. Generally, it comes with uh, your domain.com slash wp admin. So, if everybody knows the path, they can do post uh, username and password, can do the brute force attack also by guessing some username and password. So, instead of that, change that and give it a name only you know. So like you can give the name secret dash folder. So here is the way how you can do that. You just need to add some uh, configuration in WP config. You just write WP admin URL, uh, admin dir and secret folder. And you just path, uh, pass the admin cookie path. You can give it as that as only slash for the root and any other path in your WordPress setup. And there in the functions.php, you have to write this method, add filter. It basically rewrite the admin URL and will open the secret folder. Secret folder, you can give any name actually. Uh, it's your name. Yeah, with this, you also need to do changes in htaccess file. So if someone is writing in the URL secret folder, it should serve this, uh, this request should serve by the wp-admin internally. And uh, we can also add one more method here there in the functions.php to redirect if someone is trying to directly access wp-admin redirect to 404 or some other page. You can do that also. So the new URL will be secret folder. And you also need to focus on uh, file permissions. All the files in the WordPress setup should be 644. 644 means you can see read write 644 read write uh, and uh, means for the owner read write and for the group and others for and the folder permissions should be 755 for all the folders means owner read write execute and uh, if you are uploading something you are allowing to upload you need to give 775 to the folder upload folder maybe sometimes 777 is also needed i generally do 777 <laughs> for the uploading folders. So you need to check uh, no other files should have access uh, greater than 644 and 755 folders. 
and uh, WP uh, directly, uh, WP content directly you need to, uh, WP config uh, firstly, WP config you can move to the parent directly or some other places. Uh, by default if it do not find WordPress do not find config file in the root of WordPress, it find it in the parent directly. directly. So, even uh, this is the public folder, there is a WordPress folder I was having, but if you, you can put WP config to the upper folder also means outside of uh, public folder, it is uh, still it will be accessible by WordPress core. And uh, this is uh, you can also force to use SSL if firstly you have to use SSL, there you have to purchase that and if you are using SSL then you can forcefully in the WordPress setting can see the login, the front end login should only be on SSL and the back end you can just define this in config file this constant and it will be on uh, admin pages login will all be accessible by SSL only HTTPS URL need to be there. Uh, this is another thing which you can do if you are having only one admin and he is having a static IP or from any one organization only they want to use. So, this writing this in HTXS will able to access admin from 67 this particular IP. You can add multiple IPs here. This is very extensive I think only for the case basis if we need that. And change WordPress table prefix when you are installing, it asks you to enter the prefix of WordPress database. That time you should change it by default is WP underscore. If you forgot that time, later also you can do in the settings, but you, you have to sure that you did not added any other tables, you need to take care of that. And last thing, uh, many points when we talk about security, it is not fixed listed somewhere. Uh, there are many points we need to think like uh, used only trusted themes and uh, plugins that uh, you, you can see the writing commands on the WordPress plugins when you are downloading that plugin and when you are downloading or purchasing a theme from theme forest see the comments th uh, see some remarks on that and uh, when you are accessing it on any computer that computer should be free from uh, viruses antivirus should be there otherwise some malicious code can be injected uh, use some strong password uh, regularly change your admin password and uh, limit the number of admin accounts do not use admin but so these were some top some points when uh, you can focus or improve your WordPress security that uh, definitely for our customer sake we have to do. And here are some plugins uh, I just mentioned I mentioned only two plugins there are many plugins uh, which you can go and download they do different jobs uh, they, they scan your WordPress setup give you the list of uh, vulnerabilities like if there is some file permission issue database password issue or some some malicious code malware code they find in any file they can tell you and then you can take needed action on dodge uh, first plugin is login lock uh, down plugin it's it's a plugin free plugin you can download and it helps to reduce the brute force attack so if within the same ip range within the same ip if uh, one user is trying to post username and password uh, so, within the time frame if the uh, there is a setting like max login retries, so if there is number of certain number of failed attempts it just block that IP and do not uh, allow in the login. So, this is helpful and second is uh, from secure WordPress plugin it is from Acunetx company and uh, it basically scan your WordPress uh, setup and tell you the things which you can improve including passwords if they are weak password, file permission if file permission not correct, database security related, <coughs> also version hiding, this this is also important version hiding, you should not uh, because by default all the themes and uh, plugins expose the WordPress version and WordPress versions relate to the non vulnerabilities. So, your WordPress should not disclose the WordPress version, so this is a one way of uh, hiding from attackers. Uh, they can try the the known vulnerabilities on our system. So, it, it helps you to take the needed action basically. There are many other plugins like bullet uh, bulletproof plugins also there from 
Sukuri company also there is a plugin uh, they do the backup also they do the regular backup also send you notifications on email can store the WordPress database or file structure to to Dropbox or some other host uh, uh, data uh, they can store the data as per your need so you can try with those plugins also because when your site is corrupted or infected you need to go to the database backup and the file structure backup so this is all about just a brief talk on the thing you have to focus you should focus and think about WordPress security and more your customers WordPress more secure <laughs> that's it thank you any question you were talking about fiber machines. So, do you have a recommendation which directories should be writable from outside? And writable is just when you are allowing from user's point of view. Yeah, I know. Uh, so, which which ones are those? No. Oh, yeah. I wrote. Uh, uh, yes. Right? Sure. Yeah, I wrote all the files in the WordPress setup should be six four four, and all the folders should be seven five uh, seven five five. Except when you are having upload folder, when you are allowing notepad or so images. Yeah, I know, but which folder is that? That's what I'm asking. What's, what's the minimum? Seven? In the content folder, generally you have, or on the root of WordPress, you have. When you are developing a plugin and allowing, like you have a gallery plugin, and you are allowing users to upload the gallery photos. That's those folders. Okay, that's what I'm saying. User content. Yeah? The default folder is upload on something. Mm, it, you can create but new folder, no <coughs> triple seven for that particular folder. Most of the time I see there is a vulnerability in the secret folder. So now we can prevent that. It's saying like for front end, mm -hmm. giving the permission to triple seven, right? Yes. Uh, most most cases I see there is an injection to that particular folder. So how we can prevent? No, but uh, otherwise if you are not giving the permission 775, then you are not able, so your user is not able to upload the files. Exactly. So, I have to forcefully agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you might, I think you might want to add to it for, at least for Apache um, yeah. web servers. Um, most most of your PHP code files and folders should be uh, owned by root. Yes. And by then um, those folders where WordPress is actually writing to, like let's say a files folder, that would be set to an owner as a uh, Apache. Yeah, Apache is a user, HTTP. so but all the files should be Apache user. Sorry? Yeah, there is an Apache uh, user also in uh, server. So I think if you set the upload folder permission to Apache user only, then it will work. Maybe. Right, no, but I'm saying like the, uh, the document root uh, for your, for your, uh, for the website uh, should be all root. Yes. So that if Apache gets compromised, then it you know, the um, a hacker can't go through an Apache process to, you know, deface, let's say, the PHP files, because the PHP files are owned by root. So you are recommending to use only root, not Apache? Yeah. Uh, right, so for your document root, so most of your PHP files will not be written by the Apache server, right? It's only yes. for repurposes. Yes. So you set, you set the, <coughs> So you set your, uh, let's say your index.php file, whatever okay. PHP files, all to be owner root. Yes. Okay. And then, and then somewhere in your WordPress uh, folder, you'll have a folder where people can upload images, things like that. That particular folder would be owned by Apache. Apache. Because then Apache can write to it. Yes. Okay. Got it. Uh, yeah. Your point got it. And the very important point, we can right. set that. It's, it's just in case someone uh, somehow hacks. The Apache, Apache process, then it's the Apache process, which is run by the Apache user, won't yes. be able to affect those files. Definitely. But, okay. but, Thank but, you. But nice I guess point. if they're using a server hosting, they probably can control those things. You can. This can work for dedicated server apps. Sorry? Yeah, yeah. I mean. But, but most cases, for I mean like uh, the, the small customers, the low budget customers, they always go for their server machine. Well, I mean, presumably the uh, host provider would. Allow you to change the permission. Kind of security, but uh, you know you can never be sure, right? Okay. Thank you.